Theatre Phonic presents Pearly Gates, written by Nigel Foster. Oh! Wow! So... What just happened then? This is like... Like... Like nothing I've ever seen before. Wild! But... Where am I? No. No idea. Phone! Phone. Where's my hell as a poppin' phone? Oh no. I've dropped my goddamn phone somewhere. Hello? Hello? Anyone around? Well, there's nothing for it, Sylvester, my boy. No one's around. So let's go exploring. Find out where I am. Hmm. I wonder where these ugly looking gates lead to. Darn. Locked. Hello? Anyone at home? Is there anyone there? This is the moment you're supposed to announce your name. Uh, hey, Doc. Don't go creeping up on a guy like that. Uh, Doc? Doc? Where are you? I'm right here. It's just you can't see me. All right, I get it. You're gaslighting me already, right? Nah, just having a bit of fun. It's pretty boring up here being a cherub. Not a lot to do except putting the frighteners on each new intake. New intake? So, what? Does that mean that this place is... That I've... You know... Past. Past what exactly? Your best before date? You know, I really hate that expression. N nah. You're not sleeping or passed over. You're just plain old dead. Nothing more, nothing less. You really can't sugarcoat that particular pill with any euphemisms. Okay... Quite a lot to take in at one go. So, if I'm dead, where's my regulation halo and harp then? Wow. Now, looky up there. I've got my very own golden halo. I love it, Doc. Perfect. Is it the self-polishing variety, or do I have to maintain it myself? And... Ooh, thanks for this harp. I've always wanted one of these. Uh, look. This one's clearly faulty. Um, where do I send it to to get my money back? Nah, you first got her enroll in the harp lessons every Tuesday morning, 9.30 to 12 noon. But, hey, no need for the long face. You'll have plenty of time to practice here. <laughs> Plenty. As the blessed Rowan Atkinson once said, you are here for eternity, which I hardly need tell you is a heck of a long time. <laughs> so you'll get the hang of it. Eventually. So these then are the famous pearly gates. For real. No way. Awesome. I have got to have a pick for my Insta. Only, hey, Doc, has anyone handed in my phone? I'm, like, totally lost without my rass and frass and phone. And where, for that matter, are my pockets? And my legs? Do you really think that heaven has a lost property office? This isn't Grand Central Station, you realise? Okay, 
don't tell anyone I said so, but there actually is a lost property office. Room 2120 in the garden wing, second floor. When you get inside, tell them I sent you. They should be able to reunite you with your cell. Cheers, Doc. Uh, how come these famous gates of yours are left totally unattended? No one's around. I had expected some sort of welcome party at the very least. Well, that's all the domain of this great fella coming along now. Remember to give him respect and speak up clearly. O-M-G. It's him. It's really him. Yo, St. Paul! Over here, your fabulousness! Actually, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the other one. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm St. Peter. Keeper of the pearly gates to almighty God's heaven throughout all eternity. Whoa, that's rad! But hey, where were you when I first got here? I couldn't spot you anywhere. Where did you go? Oh, we just had to go for a quick comfort break. It seems to happen more frequently these days than when I first started this gig. Maybe something to do with getting older? Okay, right. Look, sorry and all, your worshipfulness, but your pearly gates don't exactly look very welcoming. You've had them painted in cold, it's prison grey. Pretty forbidding, if I'm honest. And, FYI, not helped at all by painting those high railings on either side in the same heart-sickening shade. Oh. Okay. What were you expecting? I don't know. Rows and rows of really cute pearls mounted on every upright and crossbar, perhaps? Oh. And lots of mother of pearl everywhere as a base. So that the whole effect looks like really impressive, pearly, and sparkly too. Bling, you get my drift. These, and no offence, Your Highness, these are just boring, dreary. Well, thank you for the feedback. Your views are important to us. I'll make a note. Mother of Pearl Ace, Pearl's Bling. Actually, when we put them up, the effect we were after was pearlescent, like the colours you get on upmarket motor cars. They give off a delightful sparkle in the sunshine. Brings a lift to everyone's heart, don't you know? Very fitting for up here, we thought. Except today's not exactly sunny now, is it? No, you're right there. It's not. Hmm. Okay, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I see your point. And who would have thought that the sun doesn't always shine up here? I mean, this is heaven, for heaven's sake. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to diss the place. Oh, don't worry. We get a lot of that here. You'd be surprised. Now, down to business. Let me get the great Book of Doom, which records all lives, both high and low, and the judgment decreed for every person that ever lived. Full name? Sylvester Montmorency Meet Meet Clark. But hey, shouldn't you know that already? <laughs> yes, of course I do. It's written down here in the great book. Even we have to be careful of identity theft, the work of you-know-who. Satan himself, no less. You have to admire the fella. He's done a pretty good job because it's rife these days, you know. All those additional security measures we all now have to take just so we can withdraw our own cash. All just goes to making everybody's daily life really miserable. Which, after all, was his intention all along, so you've got to hand it to him. Even here, we have found we cannot be too careful. We would far prefer to send you a one-time passcode, but sadly, as I suspect you already have discovered, you no longer possess any pockets to keep your phone in. Yeah, I was going to ask what had happened to my phone. I mean... I'm lost without it. 
It's like losing a leg. Although, I have to confess at this point, I am not really sure whether or not I still have any legs either. It says here, Sylvester, that throughout your life you have suffered from a debilitating condition known as Bi-Toon-ism. Yep, that's me. I was born and raised in a standard three-dimensional human family. But from a very young age, I was a huge fan of cartoons on TV. I couldn't get enough. Mainly American imports. And I really loved them. Really, really loved every one of them. I would get up early in the morning to switch on the TV to stare at a cartoon, any cartoon, before my parents were awake. Saturdays were like heaven for me because you could guarantee always finding cartoons somewhere on the schedule throughout the day. And during the weekdays, as soon as I got home from school, I would rush to the telly and absorb the latest episode. I would get really upset if I missed some precious minutes because Mum had to stop somewhere first on the way back. And it became a family thing to sit and watch Tom and Jerry together. My father watching with wee children and laughing his head off too. And the accumulated effect of a childhood of watching nothing but cartoons has led to key moments in my life when I couldn't distinguish between reality and the two-dimensional shows I was absorbing on TV. My mum finally took me to see the specialist and they informed us that my condition is known in medical circles as bitoonism. Hmm, intriguing. So, is this bitoonism condition of yours anything to do with being bi-curious? Uh, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that's actually something completely different. Okay, okay, no matter. You learn something new every day. So what's the earliest time you can remember when this affliction happened? Oh, let's think. The first memory I've got, and I must have been five or six years old, was of a TV advert for Matey Bubble Bath for children. You must know the one. It had the cartoon of a small child leaping happily into this bath full to the brim with bubbles. They all looked so much fun. No? No, not got the faintest idea what you're talking about. We're not that big on the commercial TV channels up here. Oh, come on. You must remember. It's so much fun to let matey bubble you, bubble, bubble you clean. No. Right. <clears throat> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> so... One evening, I filled my bath right up to the overflow, and I was working out how I could perch on the narrow ledge at the head end of the tub before launching into a swallow dive, just like I'd seen on TV. Well, at that point, my mother put her head round the door, the perfect picture of calm, and asked, what on earth did I think I was up to? And I started to explain in all innocence what I was planning to do, expecting her to stay and admire my amazing dive. I barely started when she told me, one, I had totally drained the hot water in the tank so there was none left for anyone else, and two, I wasn't really going to dive into the tub, was I? Uh, no, I lied and pulled out the plug. She never mentioned the incident ever again. But hey, I survived. Right. Tell me about Richard Legrand. Ah, yes, Richard. He was a playmate of mine when I was about eight or nine. He and his parents lived over the road from us and a few doors up. Well, we were playing in his back garden, the usual silly chasing game which all boys of that age play. This time, I was the one being chased and as I scampered down their lawn, I spotted a garden fork planted upright in the grass. I made a beeline for the fork and, just like I had seen in countless Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote cartoons, I picked it up and, still running, tossed it backwards over my head. 
<laughs> Richard's giggling cries from behind me now changed tone. There was a new urgency as he called out my name. I stopped running and looked back. He was still coming after me, but now he had a line of blood trickling down his cheek. He simply called out, It hit me. Oh, what happened? His mother had to take him down to A&E to be looked at. Probably had to have some stitches. I'm afraid I no longer remember. My own mum was extremely angry with me and made me spend my precious pocket money on some gift or other to say sorry. Sweets, maybe? Poor Richard. He wore a scarf for many years afterwards. A badge to my illness, my bitoonism. But hey, he survived. You really could have done some serious damage to him, couldn't you? Clearly a very lucky escape. So you learnt your lesson then? Um... Hmm... Tell me what happened with your big brother and the piano lid. Oh, yes. I had forgotten about that. Fast forward a few years. I am now in my early teens and keen on playing the piano. I was already a good enough player not to hate practicing. Far from it. I really look forward to my daily piano session. So, one sunny afternoon, there I was putting my heart and soul into an amazing classical piece, at which point my big brother came past me and thought it would be fun to join in. So he started singing along to the melody in a slightly off-key, silly voice, and at the same time was mimicking my playing by using the high-pitched piano keys up at the top end of the keyboard. You know, the typical sort of thing that big brothers do to wind up their younger sibling. Oh yes, I, I, I do know exactly what you mean. You must understand that I had been really enjoying playing it. I'm proud of myself for having made very few mistakes up to that point. His monkeying around completely ruined the moment. So what did you do? I did exactly what I had seen happen in the Tom and Jerry cartoons I was so fond of. I whipped both my hands off the keyboard and quickly slammed the piano lid down on his hands. Oh! You must have broken at least one of his fingers. Amazingly, no. I must confess, though, he didn't dance around comically up and down the room, waving his paws and shrieking, oh, whoa, 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 like Tom the Cat always does. But then again, his hands didn't emerge from under the lid, having taken on the shape of the keyboard either, as I'd expected. Nope, nothing broken at all. Just like my cartoon heroes, he bounced back to normal within a couple of minutes, right as rain. But hey, he survived. But he must have had very sore fingers for quite some time after. Yeah, possibly. Y you do realise you have been extremely lucky not to have caused lasting damage to either of these nice people, nor to your own younger self. Are we done here? Oh, no. Not yet, my son. Let's see now. Um... Your next victim seems to have been at university. Eh? I don't think so. Let me jog your memory, Juliet, and an incident with a chair. Oh! Yes! This is really embarrassing. I should say so. You were, what, 20 years old? Yeah, about that. Juliet was a charming, intelligent young undergraduate whom you met through one of the uni societies. She thought she had been getting on really well with you until tea time one fateful Sunday afternoon. Do you want to tell me what happened? No, not really. You held the chair out for her to sit down at the tea table and then at the last minute, what did you do? I... I'll have to speak up, young man. I can't hear you. I'm so ashamed. I pulled the chair away just as she was sitting down. So she fell backwards onto the floor. I don't know. I thought the pratfall would be really funny. And did anyone laugh? No. There was just this horrified silence. 
and then everyone in the room told me off for being so stupid. And was Juliet badly hurt? No, nothing damaged at all. Boy, were you lucky or what? She might have cracked her coccyx. And believe me, that means months of pain in store. It could have seriously impacted on her university studies. Her chances of graduating on time. I suppose so. But hey, she survived. Can't get enough of Theatre Phonic. Is the wait between plays just too difficult? Well, come to our green room by joining the Patreon. From just £2 a month, you can get ad-free episodes, blooper reels, Q&A sessions, the occasional extra play, merch and more. Head across to patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic to join us today. Bon. Bon. Which almost brings us up to date. I see here there has been one final occurrence of your bitoonism. You became a successful concert pianist, apparently, performed all around the world, Wigmore, London, Carnegie, New York, Concert House, Berlin, and many more. Yep, that's right. So, talk us through everything that happened yesterday evening, Sylvester. Okay... I had just finished an evening performance in the suburb of Hollywood, known as Toontown. Perhaps you know it? Well, with hindsight, perhaps I should have been a bit more on my guard, given the venue and the reputation of its inhabitants. Go on. I was back in the green room, relaxing with a cold beer and getting ready to change, when one of the runners knocked on my door and handed me a large box beautifully gift-wrapped, and sporting the largest ribbon and bow you ever saw. Clearly a gift from an admirer, probably a wealthy one, as it had the weight and ticking sound of an expensive antique wall clock. I asked the lad who had left it, and all he could tell me was that it was a gent dressed all in black. The lad couldn't tell me what the fella looked like because his black Homburg hat was pulled down so low shielding his face. So I asked what this mysterious admirer had said as he passed over the gift. And according to the runner, this admirer had simply rushed out of the building going hee 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 Clearly a happy chappy. So I ripped off the wrapping paper and, imagine my surprise, when I saw inside a wooden box with dynamite stenciled in red on each side. And that curious ticking noise was now much louder. Fascinated, I opened the lid and, sure enough, there inside were loads of bright red sticks. Each one marked dynamite and connected by all sorts of wires to the cutest brown alarm clock that you ever did see. With two large bells on the top. What a kind gift. Well. The alarm on the clock was set to go off any minute now. I looked closely at a big blue wire, and then I spotted a handwritten label tied to it which said, for goodness sake, do not cut the red wire. But funnily enough, tied to the red wire was a second label which said, cut this wire now. So I sat back on the chair and lit a cigar. And do you know what the last thing was to go through my head as the bomb exploded? Tell us. A huge piece of metal shrapnel. <laughs> Marked Acme Corporation. And hey, you didn't survive. And now, here you are, young Sylvester. So the moment has come, the dreadful moment, where I pronounce your fate and whether your short life has merited admittance to an eternity of perfect bliss here in heaven or whether you are condemned to spend the rest of your days suffering torment and pain. Not just that, we take back the halo and the harp as well. Ah. Sylvester Montmorency Meep Meep Clark. 
In light of all the horrible harm and suffering you have caused your family and your friends over a no. lifetime of indescribable thoughtlessness as a two-dimensional tomb, oh. it is my sad duty to pronounce your doom. Oh. You are sentenced to eternal damnation in the fiery pits of hell for all the long days and years until the very end of time. No! Nah, only kidding, lad. You're staying up here with us. Oh, cheers, Doc. You sure had me fall there for a moment? There you go. Welcome to Toon Heaven, Sylvester. Just make your way across the meadow by following the second star to the right, then straight on till morning. See you later, both of you. And that, that, that's all, folks. <laughs> You have been listening to Pearly Gates, written by Nigel Foster, directed by Emmeline Brayfield, with Peter M. Smith as Sylvester, Danielle Laid as Cherub, and Tom Jordan as St. Peter, produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. For a full list of the music used in the episode, please see the show notes. The theatrephonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland, performed by Jackson Pentland, Molly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the Theatrephonic podcast, go to theatrephonic.com, tweet or Instagram us at Theatrephonic, or visit our Facebook page. If you enjoy Theatrephonic and would like to get more content, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Theatrephonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Thank you for listening.